I'm sure if, if we have a quick look at, at what we're feeling, say right now, or has been a bit the theme of the last, um, the, the period leading up to now, um, I think activity would probably spring into our minds, a kind of busyness, uh, arrangements, whether it's administrative, uh, cleaning, um, just meeting, sitting together, talking, uh, interaction. <clears throat> These are some of the things that have been, and, and they tend to, when that's taking, when that's there in our lives, that tends to, to dominate, even if there are times when we're sitting meditation or when we, if we are doing the chanting at least once, if not twice a day. It's, it's often the activity and the interaction that will dominate because that's, I think, the, the nature of people being uh, sociable or we say gregarious uh, means chatty or flocking together. That's just our nature. And um, in, in, in talking about our monastic life here, I, I do think it's important to constantly reflect on, 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 on why we're doing the things we do and how it relates to being summoners. Again, a bit in the theme that rather than dividing, say, work time and play time also, and then not dividing um, work time and our, <clears throat> you could call it practice, or our lives as monastics, because we, we never leave that behind, or we shouldn't be um, leaving that behind, even for, for a brief moment. It's a, a constant path and a, 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 a full time um, path of practice, and and um, in this Ajahn Chah tradition, as, as we as we approach the twenty years of his passing, I think there there will be and there should be lots of reflection on what does it mean to be uh, part of this Ajahn Chah tradition, or what exactly is it, or what are the defining characteristics, some of them, and how do we honor those, or how do we and walk in, in the footsteps if we feel this is a great teacher, this is a, a path which leads to liberation. Well, what are we doing and how are we doing it in order to do that? Uh, so yesterday I was just doing some cleaning uh, with somebody who had just arrived and he was commenting on how, gosh, this is very much, the atmosphere here is very much like the Zen Center, Tassajara in, in California, where this person had stayed or been working. And so I was saying, yes, actually, that's quite a common uh, comment that people have always made about Ajahn Chah, whether it's his actual teachings, his aphorisms, he was like a Zen master, or the way we do the monastery, sort of mindfulness in daily life, all po four postures. As I was saying that, I, I pushed my hand over the table and smashed a glass, um, by the way. So it's a... Uh, <laughs> it's an... I Actually, worse than that, it was the big cafetier. So just before the Krubajans arrived, we're one down on the, on the eight cup espresso machine. But never mind. Because as well as mindfulness, it's letting go. I said that, that was already broken. So it, it is that, it is that idea then uh, that we, which we, we really, I really do believe that that, the idea of what makes us practicing is that um, we keep that going, that spirit, in, in all four postures, at all times. And so, um, then as, as, a, as a little theme, then something to, to, to re re come back to constantly and to remind ourselves of, I think, particularly in this kind of time, when we're, when we're in one sense, putting forth a lot of effort, like it's not easy to to both do the physical side of things, we're talking about oil and sort of, you know, practical things and fixing things and plumbing systems and that side of things, as well as the, our, our monastic, the what does, the duties, like bindabata and the way we have our meal and the wise reflection and our, uh, all our monastic duties, as well as at times things like the sangakamas and other activities that we do which are very specific to the bhikkhu's rules as well as our devotional activities, and then also m making sure then that, for example, with our speech, it's very, very easy for, for, for that 
aspect of the, the less meditative side, if we're working and doing this and that, and somebody wants to do it one way and somebody wants to do it another way, you know, speech can become uh, loose or casual or loud or, or whatever. And so, um, just as a, re- a reminder then, that I feel as, lo- as long as we're bearing in mind the principles of what we call right effort, then we can put forth effort in these external ways and we can do these things and we can even make mistakes like smashing the glass and it really is all practice. So as a, as a reminder then, whatever we're doing, the external side of life, the effort and what makes us, I would say what defines us as summoners and this applies very much to the lay people as well, is whether we have a, the right view starting with, okay, given that we have the, the the right view around the Four Noble Truths, but very much a right view regarding effort and right effort, knowing what is right effort and focusing on that on the mental level. So there's, there's four aspects which in a sense can be uh, sort of form two pairs, but it's the, the, the effort to avoid unwholesome states of mind that have arisen and this we have as part of our daily life anyway, our reflections, our, our kind of chanting and the kind of, you know, Dhamma we read, or, but also in the, the way we speak and the, the way we plan our day. And the effort then to abandon pahana, or to abandon arisen unwholesome mental states. So keeping in mind as we go through our day, knowing, well, what is unwholesome? A bit of negativity, a bit of annoyance or jealousy it could be or like frustration or sense desire and just knowing just keeping in mind as I go through my day I'll abandon that I'll just keep on abandoning it it's not you know so we don't the thing not to abandon is that that the practice but we can keep abandoning these unwholesome states as we clean as we um, you know decide how to fix a you know a, a, a broken whatever water heater and then there's the effort to to cultivate wholesome states. As we go about our business, cultivate wholesome states. That's mind of renunciation, letting go, the, all the spiritual factors, faith, energy, mindfulness, samadhi, banya. We can cultivate these wholesome states as we go about our business. And then, of course, the effort to maintain, because we have these states arisen at times, and just to various degrees. How are we going to maintain them? in the face of the, the challenges of life. And so this is, this is I think, the thing, in a sense, of like a, a theme then, as a, as to have to bear in mind as a pair, is to put forth effort in the external sense, as well as putting forth effort in the internal sense. And, and the Ajahn Chah, as I have seen it and, and, and grown up in it over the last few years, over 10 years, and you know, listened to talks and really thought about it, the, at the heart of it is this idea of the constant application. The, that's very important. It's the, the constancy. It's not something which we can kind of turn on and turn off and say, like, today I'll have a day of effort and tomorrow I won't so much. I'll have a rest. Or today I'll really, you know, bear in mind right effort with regard my mind. But tomorrow it doesn't, you know, then to kind of ignore it for a while. And so even to... You know, bring in some some specifics. You know, why, for example, right now we're still keeping something like the evening meetings. Um, what's the point where we could all have a break? It's that somehow that was the Ajahn Chah idea was that unless you really can't do it, we're going the extra way to to keep up these practices. There's this external right effort, the constant application, and the internal right effort regarding the mind. Last night we arrived at Wat Pong at, at 7.35 and Lung Po Liam was working somewhere, cleaning some leaves and burning off some leaves. And so it's not that everybody has to be like him, but it's just an exa- just always something to bear in mind, to say, if we're working and we're doing three or four hours work, um, that, you know, compared to other people, it, it's not very much. And also, this is not to you know, criticize anybody, but just to sort of share that. It's such, a, it's such an inspiring thing. Somebody who could just be completely sitting down all day, receiving guests or going here and there, being a sort of um, you know, famous figure or living in a very comfortable life, 
It simply wants to keep the monastery clean. And as he talked, we discussed an issue. We had this uh, problem with some of the village kids. His solution, the way to teach the village kids, is to give them activity to, and to, more importantly, he said, to lead them, to be the example for them. So this is a sort of, again, bring up the theme that this thing of being together, doing something side by side with the seniors being examples to the juniors, the juniors learning from the seniors and even showing them new things. It's how, it's how growth occurs, sort of rubbing each other, rubbing off each other, wholesome things rather than, you know, encouraging each other in the unwholesome way. So I've said um, plenty for today, just a theme then of uh, right effort, continued, sustained application externally. I think we have a lot more in our reserves than we would believe. There's so much there that the human mind and body is capable of with the right inspiration and then the right effort internally, of effort with regarding unwholesome states and regarding wholesome states. So I encourage everybody for today and onwards.